everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Allison. And today we're going to be talking about my top 10 summer reads. Now these are all books I have read before and I just am putting them in this category because I think they kind of go with a summer vibe or I think they'd be fun books to read in the summer and I might reread some of these books this summer. A lot of these are contemporary books but I do have a couple of fantasy books because I think binging a series during the summer or reading a fantasy book during the summer is also super fun but honestly you could read anything during the summer but I think these books would go perfect with the summer weather reading them by the pool or by the beach I don't live by either of those I mean I live in Arizona there's pools everywhere but I prefer to stay in because pale I look naked I'm not I swear paleness walks out into the sun for five seconds and I am burnt thank my Irish roots for that so uh, I'm just gonna jump right into it with my top 10 summer reads so the first one on my list is my life next door by Huntley Fitzpatrick or the companion novel the boy most likely to I love these books I love Huntley Fitzpatrick's writing style I actually did read this one by the beach and on a road trip a couple summers ago and I really really enjoyed it this story is all about a girl named Samantha Reed and her mother is a politician who is never home the mother hates the Garretts who live next door because they're loud and they're noisy and they have a lot of kids and she just doesn't agree with that she thinks everything should be perfect and silent and just the way a politician would run their household so Samantha has always steered clear of the Garretts but she's always been one to look in and really watch the Garretts and kind of envy them for their family life because her mom's not there a lot of the time. I think she's an only child if I remember. And so she's always watching the Garretts. But the story kicks off with Jason Garrett who comes into her life quite literally by climbing her terrace and they start to form a connection and kind of a little bit of a love story in this book if you can't tell by the cover and there is just so much fun in this book because there's so many siblings and the family dynamics really cool and there's a love story and I just really loved it it just had that very like contemporary vibe but it was one that I really enjoyed the next book on my list is one that I just recently read which is the siren by Kira Cass now this is all about sirens which are kind of like mermaids if you don't know the legend of siren they are girls who pretty much sit on rocks in the sea and sing to sailors to sink their ships to feed to the ocean as like a sacrifice and that's exactly what the siren is it follows a girl named Callan who has given her life for a hundred years of service to the ocean where she sits and she sinks ships for it to make the ocean flourish and so she keeps balance with the earth and Callan ends up falling in love with a human which is a big no-no because the ocean does not take wives and does not take uh, fiancés or mothers because they will never be faithful to the ocean. So we follow Callan's journey as she meets a Kinley, I believe is how you say his name, that's how I said it, and their love story and about how they're trying to keep the secret from the ocean. I really like this book. I think it'd be great to read in the summer because it's all about sirens and the ocean and it's just the perfect time to read it and Kira Cass's writing is so much fun to read. It's a really short book. I read it in a day and a half. I think if you are a fan of like sirens or mermaids, you'll really, really enjoy this story. Also, if you love a good love story, this is a good one to read. The next book series is one that everyone knows now um, but it is one that I read during the summer one year and I really really loved it and that is the to all the boys I loved before series I've read the first two books and I plan to read the third one this summer because the third one came out a while ago but it wasn't out when I binged the first two during that summer um, if you don't know what to all the boys I loved before is about it is a Netflix movie now if you didn't know um, and if you haven't read it, go read it because I think you'll really, really enjoy it. It's all about a girl named Laura Jean. Every time she has a crush, she writes a note to the boy and then she 
puts it in an envelope and writes their address down and puts it into a letterbox and just puts her crush kind of away. One day the letters are sent out and all of a sudden all of her letters are out to the world, especially to one Peter. It's all about Laura coming to terms with herself and how she feels about people and especially these boys in these letters and there's multiple boys and multiple letters that are sent out throughout the series. If you liked the TV show series, I would definitely read these because the second one comes out this year, I think, maybe next year, but it comes out soon. I know that. The next book on my list is one that I have raved about on my channel multiple times, but I have to throw it in here because I think it would be a really good summer book to read, and that is Even If I Fall by Abigail Johnson. If you don't know what this book is all about, it's all about a girl named Brooke, and her brother Jason confessed to a murder of his best friend named Calvin a year ago before this book took place. Now Brooke has to deal with the repercussions of people in the town and also her own internal conflict of not wanting to believe her brother is a murderer. But one day she runs into Heath who is Calvin's younger brother and they kind of come together and talk because they are the only two people who really know how the other is feeling. But they want to keep this a secret from their family because neither of them want to admit that they're hanging out with the murderer of the brother or the person their brother murdered. So it's all about that and there's a romance in this and I really, really loved it. Abigail Johnson's writing is amazing. I think she just has this way of poetically telling a story and really bringing you into the character's feelings that I loved. It's a figure skater which I think is really cool and I just really, really loved this book and I want to reread it even though I only read it like a couple months ago. I really want to reread this one this summer as like a treat to me. So if you have not read even If I Fall, I would highly recommend it. It is a little darker for a summer read, but I think everyone likes a little bit different of a contemporary every now and then. The next book on this list is the Music of What Happens by Bill Kongsberg, which is one that I read last month and I really, really liked it. It's set in the Arizona summer about these two boys who come together to fix a old broken down food truck and they end up selling food in this food truck to kind of do something and earn money during the summer. And through that experience, they develop a romance. And I just love this book. Bill keeps it so real with the way teenagers talk and the way that people interact with others and I think the romance is a great romance and the subject matter in this book is really raw and emotional but it's still fun because they're selling food on this food truck and fixing it in the heat of 145 pretty much in Arizona. Not really, it gets to like 125 but like it feels like 145 here. But yeah, I also really liked it because it was set in places that I knew, but Bill is a really great writer. If you're looking for more of an older contemporary, because I feel like Bill is more of like the older genre of YA, I would highly recommend reading this book. The next book I have talked about multiple times, but I just want to talk about this author again, and that is We Were Liars or Genuine Fraud, either one, by E. Lockhart. These books are both fun and mysterious and they keep you wanting to read the books. Both of these I read in one sitting because they're not that big and they also just like keep you on your toes. We Were Liars is probably my favorite one but I did really like Genuine Fraud as well. If you don't know what We Were Liars is about, it's all about a girl and she goes to this private island that like four families own or rent out every summer and she is having these episodes where she's not sure what happened last summer. And that's all I'm gonna say about it because you're gonna wanna read this and you're gonna wanna figure out the mystery on your own. So I would highly recommend those if you're looking for a little bit of mystery in your summer vacation. The next one is The Dead Queen's Club and I love, love this book. I think this novel is so clever and witty. This book is all about Henry VIII, I believe it is, and all of his wives if they were all in high school and all of his wives were his girlfriends. So it's so much fun. Our main character, Cleves, um, is 
funny and witty and she just has this way of keeping you laughing even in the dark parts of the story because the story does get a little bit dark it's kind of like a pretty little liars vibe where there is deaths in the book and you kind of have to figure out what's going on but i just love the twist of a historical figure into a modern day time it was so much fun to read i really like historical retellings of figures who aren't really the best figures in history i would highly recommend this one because i think it's just a funny take on the king henry and all of his wives. The next book on my list is Someone Like You by Sarah Dessen. I remember reading this probably in high school summer. It's all about a girl and her best friend and her best friend ends up getting pregnant and before she can tell her boyfriend, her boyfriend dies in a motorcycle accident. So it's all about dealing with that death but not only that, she, the, our main character is helping her best friend cope with the death of her I guess baby daddy and having to realize that she's going to have to raise this child on her own. I just think Sarah Dustin has a great way of telling stories. If you're looking for like a fun YA that has a little bit more emotion and grit to it, that Sarah Dustin book is my absolute favorite one. And next book I have talked multiple times about and I'm not even ashamed of it because I'm going to continue to talk about it. And that would be the Violet Theory by Ella D. Iver. I have a whole book talk about this book and I think it's a wonderful novel. It's self-published by Ella D. and she's working on the second one right now, When the Blackbird Sings, and I'm so excited for that to come out. If you don't know what The Violet Theory is about, it's all about a girl named Mavis and she lives in a dystopian kind of society that's ruled by a faceless queen. And Mavis is marked with a purple question mark on her wrist and she's always had it and she's never realized why she has it. But a mysterious pirate named Beck Piper comes in to her life and swoops her away on an adventure to find these pamphlets that lead to the Violets which are people who have special blood but there is a catch, the queen is also looking for them and it's just a fun adventure that's with pirates and cowboys. It has just so many elements of an adventure novel that I love and I just I can't put this book down. I've read it twice and I want to read it again. I love Beck Piper and I love Mavis and I just think that their story is fun and adventurous and it's the perfect story for the summer because if you want a little adventure in your life, definitely, definitely read this. And the last books on this list is a series. I ended up binging this series last summer and this would be the Lux series by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I've talked about the series a lot. I really love Jennifer L. Armentrout's writing. I think it's fun and it's flirty and it just takes you on an adventure that you don't want to set down. I literally finished this, started in the summer and I finished it a couple months later, but oh my gosh, it's so good. There's five books in the series plus a companion novel and I just, I don't know, I love this series and it's so much fun. If you don't know what the Lux series is about, it's all about a girl and she moves into a new town. It's a very small town and next door she literally lives by aliens and it's not like the like little green guy aliens that like speak like the Mars attacks aliens. No, like these aliens are hot. Like Damon Black is hot point in case. But she's not supposed to know about these aliens though she does find out about them and that takes her on an adventure of a lifetime where she has to kind of combat not only the government but more aliens that don't want her to know. This is the perfect bingeable series that I can see anyone wanting to read during the summer because you're not going to want to put this series down once you start it. It's like a Netflix show. You have to watch the entire season. You have to commit to the entire season. So those are my top 10 books I think you should read during the summer. If there's any books I should read during the summer, let me know down below and I will be sure to put them on my TBR list that's ever growing. But don't worry, I'm gonna get to every single book I wanna read because I've made it my job. Like literally, like it will be my job one day to read books. <laughs> Hashtag English degrees. But I hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know down below and also give this video a big thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video or any of my other content, hit that red subscribe button and the little bell next to it so you can join the Wonderland fam. And I will see you next time, loves. Bye!